Hi, I'm Amy Pomensky. I'm a holistic nutritionist and a natural chef uh, with Nourished Balance. And today I'm going to talk to you about food sensitivities. Now, maybe you or someone that you know has found out that they have a gluten sensitivity or a dairy sensitivity, and that's becoming more common nowadays. Um, and maybe you don't know if you have a food sensitivity and you want to find out if you have a sensitivity. Um, now, there's a really big difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity. When you think food allergy, you think of a major reaction right after you eat something, maybe someone who's really allergic to peanuts and you know, they have that anaphylactic shock phase, uh, or you break out in hives, something like that. Now, a food sensitivity is a little bit different. That's something that's going to cause more chronic symptoms, and some of the symptoms that you might be having if you have food sensitivities are going to be chronic headaches, digestive issues like gas, bloating, constipation, or IBS symptoms. Um, you may have some skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis, brain fog, attention problems, um, those types of things, really low energy, um, and maybe even weight gain, uh, significant weight gain. Um, so how can we test for food sensitivities? In my practice, I use two tests. I use a ALCAT test or an ELISA test. These are testing the immune system's response to the foods that we're putting in. Um, while these blood tests are really helpful and they do provide some really great information, the gold standard in the industry in the alternative and holistic care, what really tells you the best way um, or the most accurate results is going to be an elimination diet. I don't know if you've heard of an elimination diet before, but I'm going to explain really briefly how it works. And um, I will be posting an article with this video to give you a little bit more detail to help guide you along the way. The elimination diet is a very specific protocol. What you're going to do for three weeks is cut out the most common food sensitivities. That's going to include gluten, dairy, eggs, sugar, soy, coffee, and potentially chocolate. Um, you're going to cut those out for three weeks. Then there's a reintroduction phase. It's very important that you don't just introduce all the foods in one by one. So you're all, all the foods in at the same time, sorry. Uh, what you're going to do is keep a journal during the reintroduction phase and you are going to start by adding in the foods that are least sensitive or the things that you think bother you the least. So let's say um, you think you might be sensitive to gluten or dairy, you wanna keep those till last. So what you're going to do is introduce one of the foods and you're going to log that day how you feel and then you're gonna wait 48 hours afterwards to reintroduce the next food into your diet. What you wanna do is introduce the food in the morning, just a little bit, so you're not gonna do mass amounts of the food, but just a little bit in the morning, and then record how you feel throughout the day. If you have a food sensitivity, your body is going to tell you those symptoms are going to come back. Um, and that is the best way to figure out whether those are things that you need to avoid in your diet, or maybe some things that you just need to rotate and not eat as often. Um, I hope you find that helpful, and please ask any questions below. Um, you can visit my website, uh, www.nourishedbalance.com, and um, you can get some great recipes and additional posts on food sensitivities and other nutrition-related topics. Thanks. Have a good day.